So, welcome back students. So, today we are going to continue with the module 2, the inorganic chemical industries part 1. This is the penultimate section I would say. So, in the previous lectures we have seen the urea and prior to that we have seen the ammonia synthesis and the production like we have also discussed the various reactors and uh, we also discussed the various flow configuration for the production of ammonia. So, whether it is ammonia or urea, if you notice carefully, you require hydrogen, okay. Hydrogen is one of the raw materials, fine. And nitrogen, obviously, you can get it from the air by cryogenic separation. But the issue is, you need to have hydrogen. So, this hydrogen, where will it come from? So, one way you get this hydrogen is from various refinery of sources, such as those which are uh, obtained from refineries or, uh, but these again are used in refineries itself because these hydrogen are sometimes used or I would say it is used for hydrating or hydro cracking, hydro in general hydro processing reactions. So, this hydrogen along with carbon monoxide are the basic you would say the inorganic base chemical is called the syngas. So, the composition of the carbon monoxide and hydrogen serves as a raw material for the production of several other chemicals or intermediates, okay. So, we will see that, but prior to that, let us see where we get this mixture. So, this mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, they are known as synthesis gas or in short syngas. So, our lecture here will focus on the how the syngas is produced. So, what we will cover in the lecture is, we will cover the introduction of syngas, then we will see the thermodynamics and kinetics. So, now issue is, in the syngas is usually obtained, syngas means it is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, these are usually obtained by the gasification reaction or partial oxidation reactions of a fossil fuel. And what is that fossil fuel? So, that fossil fuel or non-fossil fuel, we can say natural gas is one of the source and the coal is one of the source and then uh, heavy naphtha or heavier hydrocarbon is another source. So, these three are the most common sources. And nowadays, people are also producing syngas from biomass. So, we will worry about the biomass later in the last module, but in this particular lecture, we will see primarily these three sources, the natural gas, coal and then the heavy hydrocarbon. So, initially, we will focus our case on natural gas because natural gas is methane. So, methane will have the highest amount of hydrogen. So, this will be very useful in plants such as which uses hydrogen as a raw material such as in ammonia synthesis. So, we will see initially if natural gas or methane is the source, what are the reactions? So, there will be two reactions, two types of reactions we will see. One is the steam deforming reactions, another is the partial oxidation reaction or oxidation reaction to be precise. Then we will see how these two reactions can be combined in an autothermal mode. So, autothermal as it says that there is no heat being inserted from outside. So, whatever heat generated by the reactions. So, these let us suppose you have uh, no some of the reaction which is exothermic and some of the reaction which is endothermic. Usually the steam reforming is endothermic while oxidation is exothermic. So, if you can heat use the heat of exothermicity to drive the endothermic reaction, then you would be having a perfect uh, trade off. So, you do not have need energy from outside. So, we discussed that steam reforming process and then finally, the autothermal reforming. So, what is syngas? Syngas is a general term used to designate mixtures of hydrogen and carbon monoxide H2 plus CO. So, this is what is our main focus H2 plus CO. So, what are the raw materials from natural gas to coal? So, you can use either natural gas or coal. So, the cost obviously you will decide on the production of syngas based on several other factors like cost, availability and the final usage of the syngas. So, where do you want to use the syngas? Do you want the syngas which is produced at a higher pressure or at a lower pressure? If it is at a higher pressure, then you can easily use it in the formation or synthesis of ammonia. So, that is what decides which raw material to employ. Now, raw material also will be different because see in a methane you have more atoms of hydrogen. While in the case of coal, you have lesser amount of hydrogen, more amount of carbon monoxide or carbon oxides. So, then uh, whether you want to produce an alcohol from CO that is carbon monoxide and hydrogen or you want to form uh, acetic acid or acids where you have more amount of or more atoms of oxygen, you 
choose which raw material you want to use. So, in this present example, this particular lecture, we will see natural gas as the raw material. So, there are three processes which are involved. So, three, I mean three uh, pathways, I would say, not processes. The pathways are first pathway through natural gas or light hydrocarbon. So, natural gas or light hydrocarbon means you can also take C2 and C3 as well. So, C1, C2, C3 or C2, primarily it is C1 because methane is C1. So, you can also have C2 and C3 also. So, when they are subjected to steam reforming with or without the presence of oxygen or carbon dioxide, then you form syngas. So, what happens is there is a reaction of steam and oxygen. So, not or because it requires both steam and oxygen to partially oxidize the hydrocarbons. So, why partial oxidation? Because if you want to give a full oxidation, then the problem is you will produce more of carbon dioxide which we do not want. We want carbon monoxide. That is why this partial oxidation takes place. Then uh, if you start with coal, you gasify the coal. So, if you gasify the coal, there is two uses for it. So, it can generate steam and if it generates steam, then it can drive the turbines that generate electric power as well as it can produce syngas. So, that is called an integrated uh, gas cycle. So, we will see that later. So, ultimately what you do, you just make this raw material react with steam. So, any hydrocarbon, if it reacts with steam, the reaction is known as reforming reaction. And if it is with oxygen, you know it is a oxidation or combustion reaction. So, processes where hydrocarbons are reacted with steam in the presence of a catalyst is termed as steam reforming. Okay? Okay, so, steam reforming is something which is hydrocarbons when they react with So, steam I will write down with water. So, you form this CO plus H2 basic reaction. These are the basic reactions, mixtures of CO plus H2. So, these are usually endothermic, so require heat from outside, endothermic. So, but please pay attention that you should not confuse with catalytic reforming because in the catalytic reforming, which is a primary step in oil refinery, so reforming means something like that. You have a straight chain, you make branch chain, okay? you reform the structure. So, that is what reforming does in the evidence of catalysis or maybe you can break it into small chains. So, from long chain to small chain or branch chain, these are all reforming reactions. So, these are done primarily to increase the octane rating of the gas. So, as you know, more the branched alkanes, more with the octane rating because branched alkanes like 2 to 4 trimethyl pentane will have an octane rating of 100. So, it is very useful in that manner. So, hydrocarbons are converted by a process called reforming in which they are reacted with oxygen containing molecules like water, carbon dioxide and or oxygen. So, oxygen if it reacts, so ultimately your hydrocarbons does not have any oxygen. So, you provide oxygen either from oxygen or itself or from steam. So, whichever way you add, you will have so, if you add more of steam, you will have more of hydrogen in your syngas. If you add more of oxygen, you will have more oxygen in the syngas. So, that you decide based upon your application. So, now autothermal reforming, this is a term which I would be using frequently. So, it refers to a process that couples endothermic and exothermic reactions such as steam reforming and partial oxidation. So, partial oxidation is exothermic, steam reforming is endothermic. So, the heat of reaction is supplied to the reforming reaction and the reforming reaction proceeds. So, it is called autothermal. Automatic means no heat from outside. Autothermal with heat itself within the reactor is consumed. So, hydrocarbons can also undergo partial oxidation with steam or with oxygen. So, partial oxidation means you provide the oxidizer, let us say it's whether it is steam or whether it is oxygen, lesser than that of the stoichiometric amount. So, this is, please note, this is an uncatalyzed process. So, now autothermal, we have studied allothermal means something where heat is given from outside, that is the opposite, that is allothermal. When the oxidation, if it is used, if it uses catalyst, it will be called as catalytic partial oxidation. For example, partial oxidation of coal or petroleum coke. 
So, this type of reaction if it occurs these are called as gasification reaction because the amount which is left is called the petroleum coke, pet coke ok. So, you have different examples for this partial oxidation as well as complete oxidation. Now, what are the uses of the syngas? So, now syngas has several uses. Let us say if I write down the mixtures. So, let us suppose you have mixtures of CO plus H2 on one side. Okay. Now, suppose you only require hydrogen. So, where will you use that hydrogen? That serves as a raw material. See, these are different raw materials which are used, let us say, in hydro treating. In hydro treating, what happens? You have thiophene, for example, you remove the heteroatom. You have this compound called as thiophene. Okay. So, you want to remove the sulphur because you know if you do not remove the sulphur that may poison the catalyst. So, to remove the sulphur and convert into a straight chain. So, that you, you, you add hydrogen to it, it becomes straight chain compound plus hydrogen sulphide. This is where you use when you only suppose you have a mixture of CO and H2 which is primarily H2, you use hydrogen in that. Then uh, you may also have a reaction where you require, let us say uh, in the case of ammonia which we just now studied, we require a mixture of 3 moles of hydrogen and 1 mole of nitrogen. Okay. So, you must be knowing this reaction, we have already read earlier. So, it is N2 plus 3H2, 2 moles of ammonia. So, this is the second use, let us say this is first use A, this is second use B. Now, there can be other uses also. For example, there is a use where you require a mole ratio of 2 moles of hydrogen and 1 mole of carbon monoxide okay, as a mixture. So, where do you use? That can be used in the case of, let us say you want to say in case of substituted natural gas or maybe in the presence of alkenes. So, for example, this type of reactions, if I want to write it down, so in alkanes or alkenes, so n moles of carbon monoxide will react with, let us say it is, in general I am writing n moles of water. So, you have uh, the conversion of syngas to alkanes. You can also have conversion of syngas to alkenes. In this case, it will be n moles of carbon monoxide plus 2 n moles of hydrogen to get alkenes C n H 2 n plus n moles of water. So, now you see so many uses. Now, you require a mole ratio of 2 is to 1. So, you have more amount of hydrogen required. So, then it means that you have to use natural gas as the precursor. Then uh, the another use can be for the production of methanol. In the production of methanol, you again use the same thing. You require this type of mole ratio, 1 mole of carbon monoxide and 1 mole of carbon sorry 2 moles of hydrogen and 1 mole of carbon monoxide this is the so for methanol production so methanol production what will be the reaction co plus 2h2 will give you ch3oh so see you are able to produce methanol okay so this alkenes usually they are termed as fischer tropsch reaction So, this fischer tropsch reaction will be studied in detail in the 4th and 5th module. So, as the methanol, so I will just write down the basic equation. So, methanol, then another example, you can also form for example, aldehydes. So, in the aldehydes, you have 1 mole of hydrogen, equimolar of hydrogen and carbon monoxide, 1 mole of hydrogen, 1 mole of carbon monoxide. So, in this, what you do is that you react the 
alkene actually in this case the alkene is propene for example you want to produce butyraldehyde so butyraldehyde is produced using propene as the raw material here you add equimolar amounts of carbon and carbon monoxide and hydrogen so propene reacts with syngas and it forms butyraldehyde ch3 ch2 ch2 ch o so this is a butyraldehyde this is another reaction then it can also be used for the acid formic acid in that case you don't require hydrogen at all you only require carbon monoxide so see we have covered the entire spectrum from hydrogen to carbon monoxide so what is the reaction in the case of so you, here you produce alcohol this is methanol and make it react with carbon monoxide directly it forms acetic acid obviously these are all catalytic reactions so now you see the various uses of the syngas in various proportion so hydrotreating in oil refinery ammonia synthesis then fischer tropsch reaction then you can have methanol production then you can have aldehyde production and then also you can have acid production so all these because of these uses the syngas production needs to be studied in detail so overall we can conclude the steam reforming so what we will now follow is that the steam reforming of natural gas so we will follow from the subsequent slides we will take the raw material as natural gas or light hydrocarbons up to naphtha which is now the primary method for producing syngas even though there are other methods available so processes where hydrocarbons are reacted with steam in the presence of catalyst is known as steam reforming so what are the different uh, flow schemes so the flow schemes are let's say you have you start with natural gas you start with natural gas okay so what you do you need to take out all the sulfur even though it is in minute amount the steam reforming is always in the presence of catalyst so you have to take out the sulfur sulfur so it is you have to do a desulfurization desulfurization once you do the desulfurization then you do steam reforming steam reforming and once you do steam reforming you get the syngas okay syngas so that is the output so there are many reactions also both endothermic exothermic we will see that later then uh, you have heavy liquid hydrocarbons as the source heavy liquid hydrocarbons as the source as okay in this case you do a partial oxidation so you do a partial oxidation to you know to convert them to co and co2 as well as hydrogen and water then what you, after that you remove the solid part which is called the soot the soot removal whatever is left you remove that and then you have to remove the sulfur so it cannot be removed directly like natural gas after that you get once you remove the sulfur you get the raw syngas okay then there is another source which is called coal you have to grind the coal then you have to gasify it so you have the gasification here going on then gasification then after gasification in a fluidized bed usually they are conducted in a fluidized bed you need to remove the particulate so it is particulate removal particulate removal then then you do a sulfur removal sulfur this is also removal sulfur removal then you get syngas as before okay so you see the natural gas is easier because you need to do only a single step desulfurization then you go with steam reforming so what have we studied here the desulfurization of the steam reforming is required we have seen in all the cases 
because if not done then it will form surface sulphides where sulphur is a poison for metal catalyst. So, transition metal based catalysts are widely employed in steam reforming. So, in the steam reforming you use transition metal catalysts, we will study more those in detail in the case of module 5 and 4 where we study the catalysis in general. Then the removal of sulphur compound mostly H2S from syngas is an essential step in processes that produce syngas from coal and heavy oil. So, we have seen in the previous slide that we remove syngas after not before, but after the reaction is complete and in the case of natural gas we take out the sulphur before we go for the steam reforming. So, there have been attempts which has been made if we can use some microorganism or some biotechnological bio mechanical ways so that uh, they take away the sulphur at the source itself, but it is on an academic stage it is still going on, but we are nevertheless we have not able to find out so if we can purify the feed using this source materials. Now, what are the different reactions? which occurs. So, primarily the reactions which you get is the steam reforming. So, what is the steam reforming reaction? The steam reforming reaction is methane which is the your natural gas will react with the steam to produce CO plus 3 H 2. Okay. This is the primary steam reforming reaction. So, this is highly endothermic in nature, I write endothermic in nature. Then you have the water gas, so this is steam reforming reaction. Then you may have the water gas shift reaction. What is this? So, suppose you want to produce more of hydrogen, less of carbon monoxide, this reaction is also possible because it is a complex reaction. So, this carbon monoxide will react with again steam and form carbon dioxide and hydrogen. This is the water gas shift reaction. This is exothermic, but mild, mildly. Okay. This is highly endothermic. Okay. Then you have the dry reforming. Dry reforming means reforming itself means you are adding oxygen. So, in place of steam, if I use carbon dioxide as a reforming source, so that becomes dry reforming. So, the reaction occur is, so again you are using carbon methane reacting with carbon dioxide to form again syngas. So, you form 2 moles of carbon monoxide and 2 moles of hydrogen. Again it is endothermic, highly endothermic, highly endothermic. Okay, highly endothermic reaction methane plus CO2. Then you can also have another reaction which is called decomposition of methane. Now, methane can also decompose because of the high temperature. So, the decomposition of methane, so if you see all these reactions are reversible in nature. So, decomposition of methane can also occur which should be avoided because this decompose, it can decompose to form coke and hydrogen. This is again endothermic, but mildly. So, this should be avoided because if you form coke material, it may block the furnaces because in that what happens in this gasification reaction, steam performing reactions, it is done in a reactor where you have tubes and in the tubes you insert the catalyst. So, if in these tubes where the reaction occur, if the coke is formed, then there will be no conversion because there will be no flow of the feed or the product. Okay, You should take care how to remove this coke. So, one way is you add more of steam so that this reaction is somewhat the endothermicity is exothermicity is taken off. So, becoming more and more it does not get much heat. Then there is a disproportionation of carbon monoxide, this is also called the Boudouard reaction. The Boudouard reaction is 2 moles of carbon monoxide will again dissociate to carbon dioxide. Okay. So, this is exothermic, highly exothermic reaction. So, these were all the reactions concerning steam reforming. Now, you see most of the reactions these are reversible in nature. Okay. So, then we will go back to the reactions which are exothermic, these are all endothermic. So, the heat of this is coming from the exothermicity. So, let us see what are the exothermic reactions. 
So, exothermic reactions primarily discusses the partial oxidation of methane to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Okay. So, what is this reaction now happening? So, again here instead of steam you have methane reacting with oxygen. Now, this is not an reversible reaction. So, it is again mildly exothermic, mildly exo I am writing here. Then you can also have full oxidation, this type of reaction also occurs. So, you may have So, this is highly exothermic, highly exothermic. Then you may also have uh, again uh, combination of carbon monoxide with the oxygen to form carbon dioxide, again exothermic okay. or you may also combine the hydrogen which is formed along with the oxygen to form water, again this is exothermic. Now you can see, so these are the set of reactions. So if I want to say the first one is your uh, partial oxidation because you have half mole of oxygen, the remaining uh, this all these three reactions are called as side reactions which is possible. It is complete oxidation of methane to carbon dioxide and water or oxidation of the formed carbon monoxide or oxidation of hydrogen. So, these three reactions can also be formed. So, what they do is they couple these two reactions in an autothermal reformer. So, in contrast to its moderate to severely exothermic interaction with oxygen, the reaction of methane with steam is highly endothermic. Thus, depending on the steam to oxygen ratio, operation can be allothermal. So, if the select a ratio in such a manner, it becomes allothermal that is steam with no or little oxygen added. So, it requires heat created outside the reactor or it may also be autothermal. So, when there is no oxygen added then you require heat from outside or autothermal when steam and oxygen is added heat generated because here you are not adding oxygen. So, there is no exothermicity. So, you require heat from outside so that is called allothermal. And if you add oxygen and steam both as well, then heat generated by reaction with oxygen is consumed within the reactor. So, this is the two ways where the syngas is produced. So, let us see what are the reactions which are occurring. So, this is an example I will just discuss. This is the steam reforming of methane with a stoichiometric composition of methane and steam. So, methane and steam are sent with the stoichiometric composition. So, if you see, if I want to draw here, this is the composition and let us say this is the temperature in Kelvin, this is the composition. So, what you will have is, you will have carbon monoxide close to you know first you will have the because in the endothermic reaction you form carbon monoxide because it is endothermic. So, it will go like this and you will form carbon monoxide. So, let us say uh, if I want to draw this line is around close to 1500 Kelvin and this one is let us say I start at 600 Kelvin. So, this may be 900 or so 1000 Kelvin. Okay. So, this is the carbon monoxide which is formed fine. So, this will be close to let us say in the case of stoichiometric around 0 0.20 percent 20 percent composition and the remaining. Uh, so, you have the hydrogen which is already there. Okay. So, you will have around close to 0 0.8. So, and uh, you will be having methane and H2 which is actually consumed in the reaction. So, both will go something like this. So, this is both methane as well as 
steam that is water that is being consumed it is converted to carbon monoxide and hydrogen so why is the hydrogen more than carbon monoxide the reason is you are providing more of the hydrogen see methane has hydrogen steam h2 has also hydrogen so you will have more of hydrogen this will exactly be the opposite when you do the partial oxidation okay so there you are finding and the co2 will obviously initially it will be formed and due to the exhaust proximity again it will be consumed so initially it is higher because at low temperature it is the reactant for the endothermic reaction so once the temperature rises the endothermicity actually consumes the co2 so it will somehow go here so it is called CO2. So, this is what happens when you do a steam deforming. Now, let us look at the other side when you do the partial oxidation. In the partial oxidation, we take uh, oxygen uh, is half as compared to methane. So, in this one, if I again draw the two x and y axis, this is the composition and this is your temperature. So, this is the temperature in Kelvin and this is the concentration. Now, what you have is hydrogen will be at the top, it is just you, may, you can say that it is, so why is the hydrogen concentration increasing and this is your carbon monoxide concentration. Okay. Now, uh, again you will have steam here, if I want to plot them together, the remaining so hydrogen will be around, uh, let us say it is around 0 0.6 and carbon monoxide will be close to 0 0.25 near about and the remaining water and methane, they will be coming down because these are consumed in the reaction, methane is the feed, this is again consumed. So, if this is water that is steam, this is methane okay, and the carbon dioxide also will be consumed in the process of reaction. So, this is how it looks like for the cases of partial oxidation as well as endothermic reaction. Okay. So, now this CO2 H2 ratio in the previous CO2 H2 ratio, this uh, CO2 H2 ratio will be different in the case of partial oxidation and the case of reforming because you will in the reforming you will have a higher amount of hydrogen owing to the steam as the reactant while in the case of the partial oxidation you will have lesser amount of hydrogen on the wing of adding oxygen. So, because of the it is just the elements what you are adding that is defining. So, if I just go back to the previous, so you see this ratio H2 to CO ratio, this H2 to CO ratio is higher as compared to H2 to CO here in partial oxidation owing to the elements which is processing. Okay. So, now we move ahead and uh, see how this reforming actually takes place. The heart of the steam reforming process is your uh, no, this process where it uses a autothermal. So, right now what we will do, we will discuss a autothermal reaction. So, in the autothermal reaction, you have the uh, central zone, let us suppose you have a burner reactor, let us make a reactor first. So, this is the reactor. So, in this reactor there are number of tubes. So, these tubes, in each of these tubes you actually insert the catalyst material. Okay. Now, this is placed in a furnace, let us say this is the furnace. Okay. So, if this is the furnace, you should have some space where the flue gases actually falls back and then so this is the enclosure. So, if I want to uh, this is the reactor. Okay. So, this is your reactor where the so, whatever heat is generated inside the furnace is actually let out, this is called the flue gas. Now, it means since it is allothermal means you want to put the fuel from outside. So, what you do, you actually have some ignition mechanism here, here 
and in this ignition mechanism you add fuel and air fuel and air you ignite the furnace so this is the mechanism of the entire burner furnace and in the reactor is kept within it now what you have you require three things here one is the process steam the source which is the natural gas so natural gas then you have you also add co2 i'll tell you why then you have the process steam okay so what you do once you enter natural gas enters uh, you will try to remove the sulfur quantity here so it's a catalytic process you remove the sulfur here it enters it sulfur is removed and uh, then uh, so what you do instead of putting it directly just let me make it so you preheat it so you want to heat the feed then you enter into the you preheat the feed that is a natural gas you enter then the reactor you remove the sulfur and then you actually add to this stream both co2 as well as process steam together okay because after you remove the sulfur then this stream actually mixes with the co2 and process steam and goes into the reactor so if it is goes it means it will go through here to the top and finally enter the reactor so this is around temperature is around 780 kelvin okay fine so uh, it means that the here this particular portion you generate lot of heat so this is where you generate you put boiler feed water here and generate superheated steam superheated steam you have to take away the heat because there is lot of exothermicity involved superheated steam is generated okay so this particular uh, then uh, this section this, this is the this is the convection section i would say this part this part where it exchanges heat with both the sulfur unit and the incoming stream this is the convection unit or convection section here there is no reaction this is the convection section it just gives away the heat to preheat the reactants then uh, what you have is finally the syngas coming here so the reforming reactions this reactions here you have methane reacting with steam to form co plus h2 there are other reactions also but i am primarily writing the endothermic reaction here so this is where the reaction occurs so this reaction the part where the reaction occurs is called as radiation section okay so you have a convection section and you have a radiation section in a such a process okay this is called the how the steam reforming process takes place but we are providing energy from outside so this is the way why steam is used and why co2 is used there is a reason for that it is only to you know the control the temperature because if add of more of steam we will able to control the temperature fine so we go ahead and we we'll discuss this why these steam are used in more than the stoichiometric quantities so please pay attention to these points the steam reforming is performed at a very high temperature at greater than 1000 kelvin and a uh, hence a catalyst is necessary to speed up the reaction why is the catalyst required because you know methane to break a ch bond it is highly stable so methane is very stable so you need a you need a catalyst tubes containing the catalyst are inserted into a furnace where they are heated by the by products of the combustion of fuel okay so you saw the fuel and air coming and igniting the furnace so you have combustion so you have products coming out so that's why they are heated up then the steam reformer as i told you is cut into two halves the convection section is where the heat recovery from hot flue gases takes place and is utilized to warm the gas supply 
and process steam as well as to produce superheated steam. So the heat generated in the furnace is used to warm the input gas as well as steam as well as to produce the superheated steam through boiler feed water. The reforming reactions only takes place in the radiant section. This you should take care. So you have the convection section and the radiant section or the radiative section. But only thing is there are some issues while you do such a reaction, sulphur is to be removed from the natural gas feed. So what you do is you preheat this natural gas at 70 Kelvin by combining with the steam and then it enters the reformer tube. So remove the sulphur and then the combustion of the fuel in the reformer furnace provides the heat necessary for the endothermic reforming reaction to occur. So this is the allothermal operation. So, additional process steps such as secondary reforming and shift reactors that reduce the, so if you want to reduce the carbon monoxide, what you have, you put another reactor which will perform the only the water gas shift reactor. So, then uh, carbon monoxide concentration decreases, you will have more of hydrogen, okay. So, these are further based on what product you want, the industry wants what type of product, fine. So, it means that there are two issues because such a high temperature formation of carbon is actually it is always be there, the carbon that is coke formation will always be there in the steam reformer. So the coke deposition on the active sites of the catalyst leads to deactivation of the catalyst. So there may be hot spots which is the accumulation of carbon deposits in the reformer tubes. If this happens, the flow is completely obstructed. So care must be taken in selecting the reforming process to ensure that carbon generation is restricted to an absolute minimum. So one way you reduce the consumption of or production of carbon is to add extra steam. So if you add steam, the partial pressure increases and if you have more of partial pressure, the reaction slows down. So you know, the rate of the reaction slows down. So you have less coke formation. So it is excess steam can be used to slow down carbon forming processes. As a result, the reformer is often run at steam to carbon ratios in the ratio of 2.5 to 4.5 moles. So you have excess of steam always applied per mole of methane added, okay. So the upper, so now on our upper limit, the upper limit means when you take 4.5, when do you take 4.5? When you take, when you have the feed as heavy hydrocarbon such as naphtha. If you have lower hydrocarbon, 2.5 is fine like natural gas. So you decide upon what ratio you want to take. So how do you prevent the carbon formation in the steam reformers? Higher hydrocarbons such as ethane and butane are more likely to, if they are from higher, higher hydrocarbon, they are more likely to accumulate coke. When you use higher hydrocarbon as a feed, you are more likely to insert or accumulate coke inside the furnace. So steam cracking can also happen at high temperature because if it is a high, high temperature, you know you have this compound, the higher hydrocarbon naphtha means you have these straight chain compounds because at high temperature it may also break into smaller fragments resulting in the formation of alkenes that can readily react. So if the alkene is formed, the alkene can readily react with carbon to create carbon monoxide. So this type of reactions can also be formed. The reaction which it can form is, let us say you have, it forms alkenes after the cracking. So these alkenes can then further react with the carbon, so such type of reaction is also possible, okay. So because this delta H is less than 0. So then it is a problem, then again uh, so the, this type of reaction should be avoided. So it means that if you add steam to it. When you add steam to it, you are lowering the partial pressure of hydrocarbons. If you are lowering the partial pressure of hydrocarbon, a benefit is you are increasing the partial pressure. So you have partial pressure of the hydrocarbons is lower. So it will improve the hydrocarbon conversion, okay. So steam serves two purposes. It is to reduce the coke formation and also to improve the hydrocarbon conversion. But Till now thermodynamics, kinetics we have seen, we have seen the reactions. So we have also seen that okay, uh, we need a higher temperature for endothermic and lower temperature for exothermic. But these are always at lower pressure, so all these reactions are at lower pressure. But kinetically and thermodynamically speaking, 
they it is more economical to operate that high pressures. For example, the syngas needs to be under pressure. So, for methanol synthesis, which just now I discussed, this takes place at 50 to 100 bar. Or ammonia synthesis, which takes place even at higher pressure. You have just studied this much high pressure, 200 bars. So, it means I need a syngas at these pressures. That is my objective. I know I am actually uh, trying, there is a trade off because if I increase pressure, your conversion is will be less because more number of molecules will be there. So, your conversion will be less, but still industry do that. Why? Because they need the syngas at a very high pressure. So, they want to reduce the pressure which is used in compressing the syngas. As a result, despite being thermodynamically unfavorable, most current steam reformers work at pressures significantly higher than atmospheric. Higher pressure allows for less expensive syngas compression and a more compact reformer. But downside is a reduction in the methane conversion rate. So, if you have higher and higher pressure, then there will be a reduction in methane conversion. Then if you want to improve the methane conversion, what will you do? Then increase the steam. So, that is the way you do it. You increase pressure, you have to increase steam. So, higher temperatures are applied and more surplus steam is coming. So, you increase both pressure and temperature and more and more of steam. So, as to counteract the influence on the equilibrium. So, this is very important. Till now, what we have design, decided, we have discussed is the from academic point of view, the kinetics and thermodynamics, but the industry wants to operate at high pressure. So, if you want at high pressure in gas, it means you have to increase the temperature and you also want to increase the steam rate. Okay, these are the two measures they usually take. So, what it is then we come to a term called is methane slip. What do you mean by methane slip? Methane slip implies the amount of methane which is not converted, which is or unconverted. So, what is that? Let me tell you. So, if I want to draw a plot between a methane slip that is the unconverted methane versus temperature. This is temperature in convert and this is the methane slip. Okay. So, this temperature will vary from 1000 to 1200 Kelvin, let us suppose. So, if you take a steam to methane ratio of H2 to methane ratio is equal to 3, steam is more, methane is less and you draw at different pressures, what happens? See, you will get something like. So, this is close to 50 percent, 60 percent uh, unconverted, this is close to uh, you know 40 and this is close to 30, just writing the values. So, this is a pressure of 10 bar, though this is 20 bar and this is 30 bar pressure. So, in these pressures you conduct the experiment where the molar ratio of steam to methane is 3. If that is the case, you see you are at higher pressure and lower temperature. You have more and more methane slip, amount is higher. So, what you want to do? You want to conduct at this pressure 30 bars and you want to pull this particular line downside. So, it means you need to increase the steam. Okay. So, if you want to increase the steam, now I will, what I will do? I will fix the pressure and increase this ratio, this ratio. So, then I will see the methane slip in percentage, how much it is unconverted. How much it is unconverted? So, you have this again, you have a temperature in Kelvin. So, you have 1000 here starting temperature and 1200 here. So, if you see the ratios are will be something like this. So, this is suppose 80, this is 40 like that. So, this will somehow go like this, this is for 1, this is for 2, this is for 3 and this is for 5. So, ratio here is 5. So, the ratio is 5, this is 3, this is 2 this is 1. So, if you go at a higher steam ratio, you can conduct this as a pressure of P is equal to 30 bar 
So, you require more and more of steam so as to reduce this from let us say from 60, so you have reduced to 40. So, you, have, you want to use a ratio higher so and to include more of steam into the reformer. So, in most cases increasing the pressure and consequently the temperature of an operation is financially made. So, you increase the temperature this way and you increase the ratio it is financially beneficial. Maximum allow, but the maximum allowable operating temp temperature for a given pressure is capped by the creep limit of the reformer tubes which is a function of the tube material. So, you also have to pay attention to the material of construction of the reformer okay, because it can withstand a certain pressure and temperature. So, ultimately the take home message here is you have to increase the temperature, increase the pressure but at the same time increase the steam input. Okay, these three you should keep in mind in order to get the zinc gas at a higher pressure. Now, that is the last topic which is we will see the, the autothermal reformer in this case. In the autothermal reaction, heat is produced in the reactor by the burning of the portion of the feed with the oxygen and the H2 to CO ratio of the product distribution changes. In the presence of catalyst, autothermal reforming is the combination of both steam reforming and partial oxidation in a single reactor. So, what is the reactor looks like? So, it will be something like this, you have the reactor like this, so what you have is you are producing oxygen here and you have adding the natural gas, so methane is added here, okay. First you do partial oxidation at the top. So, here you actually have a burner, so this is the burner, okay, this is the burner. So, when you add this burner to it, the partial oxidation reaction takes place. So, it will generate heat. So, once it generate heat, so what happens is you have the combustion zone here, the combustion zone. So, the temperature is around close to 2200 Kelvin. Then in the catalytic zone, you have the endothermic reactions that is the reforming zone. So, this is around 1200 to 1400 Kelvin. Okay. And then whatever syngas you are getting here. Syn gas which is produced is from 2200 bar. Okay. So, this is how you do you add oxygen, you add methane, you burn it, go for a partial oxidation, you form the combustion zone, and then you have the reforming zone. So, in the molar fold ratio, if you have for H2O to methane, is usually the ratio of in the combustion here to methane you have the ratio value sent in the combustion zone is around 1 to 2, 2 while the O2 to CH4 ratio is around 0.6. Is around okay. So, this is how the syngas is produced by autothermal reforming. So, the reactor is a pressure vessel, so in, the re in this case the reactor being a pressure vessel is lined with the refractory. So, it needs greater, it should able to withstand greater pressure and temperature as compared to steam reforming which we discussed previously. The portion of the feed here is initially oxidized in the zone of combustion. The remaining feed is then catalytic reacted with the produced carbon dioxide and water in the lower section. So, the exothermic oxidation reaction is responsible for the endothermic reforming. So, this actually all is about the autothermal reforming. So, we conclude here and uh, most of this material and the uh, schematics you should go through this our uh, book, the Mauling's book where you will find some other interesting topics also. So, where you use a secondary reformer so as to reduce the conversion so of methane. So, that also you should study and in the meantime in we will move in the next lecture you will see what happens with the gasification of the coal. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.